um, I started traveling in 2005 when I was uh, 45 years old and I was recovering from depression and I had been doing yoga and I got this compulsion to go to India and it seemed crazy, but it was such a loud voice, such a loud calling, I couldn't ignore it. So in spite of my fears, it, I started saving and rearranging my life, packing, giving up my apartment, the whole thing. It took 11 months and on December 4th, 2005, I flew to India and I had a, a return ticket dated six months later. I'd never done anything like this. I didn't know whether I was even going to live through the experience. It was really like diving into the deep end of the pool, you know, to have your first big solo trip be India of all places. But I felt called to go and um, I had an amazing experience and it changed my life. But what I, what, I, what I want to say about that is that, you know, I, over the years I've had a lot of people um, remark, you know, very nicely, you know, say, you know, that they think it's great what I've done and they're proud of me or they inspired by me or whatever. But I think the most important thing I have to say is that there's nothing special about me. I was a normal person who was actually fraught with anxiety and depression at that time in my life because I'd had a lot of losses in my life. Um, but I was the only thing different was that, I, you know, I listened to this voice inside me and that I did actually take the jump and take the leap to go to India. I actually um, took the action to go. I believed in this voice or myself or the universe or something. I don't know. Um, so what I want to say is that if I can do it, literally anybody can do it. And that's kind of, you know, the segue into um, my first question, which is, um, what would you do if you weren't afraid? And this can be about travel. It doesn't have to be, but um, think about it for a second. And if, if, if you had no fear, what would you do? Now, is there anybody who'd like to start? Yes, I'd like is to start. Anybody? Yeah, and especially if something, came to you, if, if something came to you spontaneously, even if it doesn't make sense, it'd be really fun to tell us. Yeah, just briefly. Actually, it's, it's the perfect synchronicity, as you just told us about a fire breath. I've done quite a bit of energy work and breath work over the last couple of months. And it was just last weekend that we actually learned about a fire press and were well sort of asked to dry it every day. So for it coming in up today through you is, is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So um, yes, and as, as you just said, listen to that voice and you went into action so everybody can do it. I actually think this might be the first, my first day today to actually go this way. I had quite a lot of epiphanies over the last weeks. As you, most of you know, I want, I wasn't here in the last weeks. Yeah. So it's now the start to something you actually to follow, to not only follow the path from depression with me as well, a couple of years ago to celebrating life and, uh, using this also as a vocation, as a career to a certain extent. So the final destination, final goal is also to work, to work not only as a consultant in the business context with this, but also to have uh, speaker engagements internationally so that I can use my travel back in all my languages. So today or this week, week is actually the start for my new life. So thank you for, for your inspiration today, Marianne. That is some wonderful synchronicity. I love to hear that. Thank you very much for telling us that. That's amazing. And yeah, if you're going to be doing things like speaking, you need your breath, you need your power, right? So this is, you're right on track. So that's awesome. Anything come spontaneously to anyone else when I ask the question? For me, um, what ha I imagined you know, when you're a kid and you have a globe and you spin the globe and you put your finger down somewhere <laughs> to see where it is, that sort of thing, like what's out there in the world for me? Um, I am afraid of my own shadow sometimes and have had anxiety, uh, particularly flying anxiety, which I just discovered I really had so much anymore. Um, so I feel like 
as the world is opening up for all of us, the world is opening up for me as well. So um, I, I would love to just sort of put my finger down and on the globe and say, hey, what's what's this place about? And um, you know, be more adventurous. That would be an amazing thing to do. Yeah. Are you going to do it? <laughs> at least put, at least, I at might. least the, no, but at least the finger part, maybe not yeah. the travel part, but I mean, one step at a time, right? Like, right. Are and, you gonna and research. Are you gonna, yeah. Are you going to, are you going to, are you going to commit to us that you're going to do the, at least the putting the finger part? I would, I would do that. I will do that. Okay, cool. Okay, good. <laughs> Who else had something come come up for them? I think Jane did. And maybe if you don't mind just introducing yourselves because there are some new people here so they know who you are and where you are. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jane. I live in South Florida. I'm a uh, retired school librarian and I love to travel. If I had the courage, I would try another zip line. I was pretty badly injured in a zipline mistake that I made several years ago and I've just taken it off my bucket list. It was something, it was the old, first time I'd been on one. It was something I really wanted to do and now I don't think I do anymore. I'm just not sure. <laughs> it hurt for a lot of time. But... Oh wow, okay. So that's like that um, old thing about getting up on the horse, right? Getting back up yeah. on the horse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can understand why you would want to do that. But on the other hand, um, how are you? Are you are you okay? Are you recovered? Oh, I'm fine. It was several years ago, okay. and I, I oh, okay. severely bruised ribs. Um, I didn't break them or anything, but it did damage the rest of the vacation for sure. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm yeah. really sorry oh, to well. hear that. Yeah. I'm really sorry to hear that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for sharing that. Thank you. Next. I think Diane. Um, the first thing that came to mind because it's, it's really, um, it's, it's limiting for me in a lot of different ways is my fear of heights. I have a terrible fear of heights, but it's gotten worse over the years. And especially in my travels, it's very limiting because I mean, if I have to go anywhere where I, I need to drive personally, or if I have to, and I don't know what the road is going to be like. And I'm always afraid that I'm going to end up over a bridge, traveling over a bridge or a like traveling up a road that's a mountain. It doesn't have to be, you know, thousands of feet high. It just has to be, the depth has to be certain depth that as soon as I turn a corner, I, I freeze. My heart pounds and I, and I sweat. And so what my point is, it's very limiting because I stop myself from doing anything because of it, because I'm afraid of what could possibly be. I don't even know that there's a height there, but I'm concerned if I'm going to have to drive in a, in a new city or in a new country, I don't know what the roads are going to be like. I don't know if I'm going to face height. So I just don't bother. I'll take local transportation. I just came back from France. I rented a car, but my niece was with me. So she drove, I rented the car, but she drove. It was great. She drove, but I would have liked to have driven that. And then partway through, I thought, I could have driven this road. This was a small country road. Why didn't I at least try it? So, you know, like I'm, and I'm more timid as I've gotten older. I'm not more daring. You would have, I should be more daring because I should say, oh, who cares, right? But I'm not. My, my fear is getting worse. And so I have to find a way to deal with it because it really is limiting. We, we hiked um, one of the cliffs in France beautiful beautiful site and I actually was pretty good I did most of it and we got to a point where oh, oh I can't deal with the rest of this so actually I was with my niece and my nephew and his girlfriend they went the further furthest distance but I didn't go I took a picture of them up there but I I couldn't make that last bit that last that last bit of the trek you know and so I probably I say I couldn't I didn't I probably could have and afterwards, I said, Diane, this would have been the time to do it because you were with people that could have helped you if you needed help. And I didn't. So well, that's what I have to remember, I think, next time, if I'm with people that I trust, to try it. Um, and even at home, 
I won't, I won't drive over a bridge. Uh, there's a few bridges I will because I can handle the height, but others I, I just can't drive. So I can, I'll take public transportation to go somewhere if I have to, if I know I have to take that bridge. That's how limiting it is for me. You know? mm -hmm. um, th thank you for sharing that. What, what was it like for you to tell us this? How was it for you to, uh, to talk about this? You should say that. I felt like I'm, I've got a nervous stomach just talking about it. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I just want to acknowledge. I, you know, I want to acknowledge your courage, right now in this moment. Yeah. Well, for I don't even think it's just, very courageous. <laughs> well, you were sharing a vulnerability with us, Maybe. and actually, I, I mm. mean, many people, including myself, are afraid to share these kind of vulnerabilities. So mm. I, I personally, to me, I think you just d demonstrated an incredible courage. Well, to Jane's point, maybe I should try zip lining. And maybe that would help, you know? <laughs> I don't know. And I'd like to, that's another thing I'd love to try. Maybe I'll do it with my sister. She loves it. But because I think if I could handle that, maybe I could slowly, gradually get used to doing stuff that involves heights, you know? Because it looks like fun. It's, it sounds to me like getting somebody to help you and support you is going to be really important in this process. So I, I think I, personally, so. I, yeah. And I think a lot of us can relate to that, right? Like, there's things even, even here in India, like even though I'm a fairly fearless traveler in India, cause I've lived here for so long, there's stuff I just don't want to do by myself. And I, and I'll just say, I'll do it if somebody will come with me, you know, like, mm. Mm. so getting that, getting that support, I think is, is part of the process. And also, like mm -hmm. I said, like, I think, I think when we uh, um, reveal our vulnerabilities, I think that's when we're really strong. And I think this is a particularly powerful women's strength personally i think this is feminine strength and um i like I re, like i said i really just want to acknowledge that that this is part of what we bring what we can bring to the world is the strength of being able to be vulnerable because you know um the opposite of that is obviously violence and aggression i think mm -hmm. so thank you very much for sharing who else wants to Hi, I'm Eileen. I live in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, which is right near Philadelphia. Um, I am a nurse and a yoga teacher and a meditator. And um, I was, um, I became a widow in May. So all of my travel, you know, every, we traveled a lot and um, had a lot of good adventures, especially on a bike. We did a lot of DBT tours. So now I just kind of struggle with, do I do it alone? Um, how, how will that be? Well, you know, I'm kind of an introvert, so I, I'm okay being alone. I, I you know, by nature, I, I need a lot of downtime, but um, I think the thought of, of dining alone, like not having somebody to sit at dinner with is probably the biggest thing, not that you can't, but it's just not the same. Um, or feeling like you're just kind of tagging along into someone else's, you know, couple dinner or something if they invite you. I guess that's probably what I struggle with. And I would like to continue doing the VBT tours. We we went to some interesting places and they were, you know, energetic and fun, but have to figure out, you know, how that's gonna look in the future. Thank you very much for sharing that. I think this thing about not wanting to have dinner alone is really common. I'm in a lot of women's forums online and this comes up a lot. So you're certainly not the only person who feels that way. And I think one of the feelings or thoughts that we have in our mind um, behind this sometimes is that, you know, somehow we think it's um, some failing on our part that we don't have somebody, you know, fabulous to be having dinner with all the time, you know. So that somehow it's some, it's just, it reflects badly in us in some way. But I personally would really love to change this paradigm. I'm a big solo traveler. And uh, that's actually my next question is about solo travel. And um, I'm a really, uh, I think, I think kind of owning the adventure and the courage of solo travel and saying, you know, I'm a solo traveler and I'm proud and I'm sitting here in this restaurant by myself because I'm it's part of the journey and I'm not afraid to do it. And, and uh, uh, just kind of changing the paradigm from being something that's kind of a negative and a 
and a failing to, to being something that's a proud badge of honor, you know, as a solo traveler. I don't know, I kind of would love to be able to kind of get people to think in a different way about that somehow. Do you know what I mean? I think also, you know, it's not just the dining. I think it's also, you know, the, the, the way we used to like to travel was not necessarily going to the restaurant with the whole group, but like really exploring the area, going to the back roads and seeing where the locals eat and, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, be, if you feel safer with somebody, you know, do you, do you go and, and explore the little side roads and see the people that really live there and everything? And are you afraid of getting lost if you're by yourself? Not really lost, um, but, you know, just being safe more. I can relate to that. That's that's very very understandable. Now, is there anybody who hasn't hasn't shared yet? Suzanne, Car Carolyn. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with that question, but because I I think I'm kind of doing that right now. Um, I'm leaving on May 11th. Uh, to live full time in Mexico. Um, it's been in the works for a long time. And um, so I'm in the midst of, I, I you know, I want to use this word because <laughs> it describes um, what's what I feel right now. And it's just a clusterfuck. It's just, I'm in a tornado of having to be courageous to get through this. It's my family, my folks. They're both still alive, but they're not well. And to follow my gut, you know, to follow what's inside me um, and to have the courage to trust that this is my time. Um, it, it seems as though my brothers and sisters and my children and everybody that lives here in, in Canada and in Ottawa in particular all need me right now. It's just I'm overwhelmed with need. And just before this, um, before this meeting, I was just in tears because I just felt like I, I was so, like I'm not this pillar of strength. And it's a moment of weakness on my part right now so I'm, I'm trying to gather the courage to um, not feel, you know, so, so selfish in leaving and doing this. Um, so I think that my moment, my, my, I've had many, uh, Carolyn knows, I've had many adventures in the past. And I've just gone wild and done crazy things in my life all by myself. It's I've never lacked courage for that. But when it comes to um, to leaving my folks, it's it's really it's a struggle. So I'm, I think I'm having like the biggest moment of courage in my life. Just right now and I was going through it right before this and I thought well I better not get on this meeting and talk but maybe by speaking about this it'll encourage other people to go deep within yourself and just trust you know trust that if you know you're a good person at heart and you love others with all your heart that there is a time for you to go forward because I don't know what's waiting for me in, in Mexico. Maybe there's a place that the universe has got planned for me right now. And if I don't have the courage to go forward, I'm never, I'm never going to get to that place where maybe someone's 
waiting for me at the other end. So I started Journey Woman at the, at the beginning of this episode when I was getting personal residency and everything and I've got everything and everything's in order and the tickets booked. So I've said this many times and uh, I really want everybody to really believe me that this community has really, really strengthened me. And I don't know what I would have done without this community during this whole process. So again, I want to thank everybody for always being there for me. And uh, you've been wonderful. And I have so much admiration for everybody um, that I've met. So uh, yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much for sharing. Sometimes the most courageous thing is, like I said a moment ago, to be vulnerable. Like, I think that takes more courage than jumping out of a plane, you know, what you've just done. How I have feel? jumped out of a plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I landed this in a tree. I landed in the only tree, miles oh and miles and miles. It took a fire department to get me down. And I've zip lined and I've gone cliff diving. I've done all those things, but this is my moment of courage. Yeah. But you did all those things. You landed in a tree and you're still here. Here you are. You're telling us about it. You landed in the tree. The tree was there. It, it like caught you. So yeah. sometimes I think. Sometimes I think we need to have these lessons over and over again until we finally learn that we are being supported, we are being carried, we are being helped, we'll be fine. You know, I don't, sometimes I think I've got such a thick head that I, why don't I learn this? <laughs> why don't I, why don't I learn this? You know, and I, I just, I can just totally relate to you. When I got on that plane on December 4th, 2005 to go to India for six months, mm. I mean, I, I think, you know, I really relate to, it, it, it does feel exactly like you're jumping off the cliff and you, you have no idea what's going to happen, right? And uh, uh, it's just, it's, it, it's, it's exciting, it's nerve wracking, um, it's counterintuitive. Uh, and as women, especially women, you know, certainly of my age, I wasn't brought up to put myself first, you know? <laughs> You know, take, you know, do what, listen to my voice. So I feel like I'm going to have to do a road trip to Ottawa and Montreal and see you guys. And, uh, yes, <laughs> although I, I don't know good. whether to hug you, Suzanne, or like push you out the door. I not sure. Both, both. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Yes. Thank both. you for sharing that. Yeah. And it, to that point, I was talking to my husband and I said, you know, when I'm telling you how I feel like I'm almost on the floor right now, I don't need words. I just need your arms. That's all. I just need, I just need your support. I need you to tell me that you love me and I need you to know that you're there to pick me up. And uh, so, yeah. And that's what you guys have done is you've picked me up. You really have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's really an honor to be part of this journey. And I've just joined it this tonight. I'd like to speak. Um, my name is Mary Clark. I'm a longtime journey woman from the late nineties. Um, kind of quiet most of the time, but I want to address Suzanne first, um, especially about your uh, fears about leaving your parents at this point in their life and at this point in your life. Um, it reminded me of when I was caregiving for my mother and, you know, I had, I had a team. Uh, I was kind of leading and organizing the team. It was 12 of us, but uh, travel was my salvation during that time. Um, and if I didn't travel, I think I would have lost my mind. And 
Sometimes you have to trust the process of what you need in order to save yourself so that you can, you know, you can live a full life. Your parents have lived a full life. They would not want you to stop your life for their life. And, you know, you've put everything in place. This is your time there. You won't get this back ever again. And um, I hear the pain. I hear the struggle. But sometimes that is even more evidence that you are moving in the right direction. And so I encourage you to take that leap of faith because you have family that are there to help with your parents. You know, you said brothers and sisters, they're there. You can get back there if you need to, but you won't be able to capture and experience Mexico if you're not there and you will regret it you will regret it. So please, you know, follow your heart, follow all the plans that you've made and do that for you. It's not selfish, it's selfless. And I think that's one of the problems as women, we inherit that, um, that fear that we're being selfish. You're not being selfish, you deserve this. We all deserve to do whatever we want to do. And the hardest person to convince is ourselves. So, you know, I, I, I feel your, I feel where you are, but I know many times I had to get on that plane and just leave everything and everybody behind because if I didn't do that, I would have been on the floor in a pile. And unlike you, I didn't have a husband to pick me up. Um, I didn't have family members to pick me up because they were on the floor in their own piles. I was the strong one and I got tired of being strong. And the only way I knew I could save myself was to go away and be free. And the way that I did that was travel. So during the four and a half years when my mother was ill and declining, I probably traveled somewhere every month because I needed that. That was that was my self-care. So um, um, I'll just end it there. I'm not afraid to do anything right now um, that I haven't already done. Um, yeah, I'll just- Thank you, there. Mary. Thank you. <laughs> You're just like my big sister that just gave me a big hug. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mary. I, I thought that was very beautiful as well. And um, I think we can all relate to that. You know, um, I mentioned that, um, uh, Suzanne, I'm pretty sure you probably heard me mention that I had to get the courage to get on that plane in December uh, 2005. And, you know, I almost didn't because I, like two days before I got a chest and bronchial infection and I was going to use that as an excuse to not get on the plane. And, but I went anyway, I did it anyway. I pushed myself, you know, to go. And now 18 years later, when, when I think about, you know, how much my life has changed, I became a professional travel writer. I moved to India. So many things came from that trip. My whole life that I live now came from that trip. Sometimes I shudder to think what would have happened if I didn't get on that plane? You know, it's, it's actually scary to think about it. So how are you doing, Suzanne? Thank you. I'm going to be, I'm going to be fine. It's just that the whole, it's just weird that you use the word courage and that's what I was struggling to find. So I'm just going to have you all in my head for the next seven weeks. I'm just going to carry you around in this bubble of security here. That sounds like a very, a very good uh, strategy. There are a few people we haven't heard from. Um, Anne, welcome to, <laughs> welcome to Friday morning. <laughs> good morning. Um, I'm Anne Barry. I live in California, so I am 
1000% not camera ready because I'm usually still sleeping at 7 a.m. And I had a calling to just be on this call, even though most times if something at 7 a.m. I decline. Maybe that's something I need to get over as far as being fearful about being in a place where I don't feel as comfortable because I'm not rested or whatever. But to answer the question, I've been offered an opportunity to um, take a trip to Slovenia, which is a place I've wanted to go to for a very long time. And it's an opportunity that's very well priced and fits. And because of finances, I'm thinking that I shouldn't go because it's like the little safety net with everything that's happened with my business in the pandemic. And listening to you ladies has made me realize that, yes, this opportunity kind of just appeared, even though it's, I've been aware of it, but I had put it aside because, you know, I don't have the funds to do this. And if I don't take advantage of this, I know I will regret it. So I appreciate being in this community and just this very brief time that I've you know, never been here before is that, yeah, I, I need to do this because who knows if the opportunity will present itself again. Thank you, Anne. It's, it's my first time here too, by the way. So thank you. Thank you for, you know, for sharing. And I'm, I'm always amazed at how women can inspire each other. Um, and this is something that I, I've learned sort of later in life when I became a blogger and I wrote something and somebody went somewhere because of what I wrote and they got a lot out of it. And I was like, oh my God, I impacted someone, you know? And it was a incredible feeling. I'll never forget it. The way we can inspire each other. Yes, thank so you. Thank you. Um, Carolyn, who, who else has not? Uh, Hewitt. Okay. You at? Are you are you there? Are you able to hear us? I might be saying your name wrong. I don't have a photo, um, a, a visual for her. No. So I'm not sure what that means. Okay. Well, maybe she's just listening today, so so that's fine. But I think everyone has spoken. So we, so we might have time for one more question. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, the, I, I had a couple of questions planned. So we run, so almost running out of time. So I guess the, the two options are to ask another question or did you want to talk about um, the wonderful article you published about supporting women in travel? And um, maybe that could be the next question is how can we support each other? And how can we support women when we travel? Um, should we segue into that? What do you think, Carolyn? It's up to you, Mary Ellen. I know you had another question, so I'm I'm open to hearing yours um, as well. I well, think why don't we? Why don't, why it's don't we? Because I think we're all, we're all for me. International Women's Day every day at Journey Woman is internet. We're yes. we're doing this every day and exactly um so that article was just an attempt to kind of bring everything together and and um help us you know it was good for me to write actually because i went oh yeah there are a lot of things we can do even if we're not even if we're not traveling or even if uh we think there are small things not big you know these are small things right some are big things some are small things so um so i'd rather hear from people than hear my i'd rather hear what's on people's minds Oh, okay. So um, I had uh, two other questions planned. I think we only have time for one. Um, uh, so I think a better segue might be to the question of what what is currently stopping you from doing what you want to do? I wanted to talk about solo travel. So uh, you can bring in solo travel if you want. Is it, if you talk about whether you've solo traveled or not, or whether you're thinking about it, whether you want to do it. and and if not, like what is stopping you from, from taking the trip or doing the thing in your life that you want to do? So when I ask you, what is stopping you? Does something come up? Because something might just come up right to the front. What is stopping you? Anybody want to go first? I'll go first. I actually have to leave early because I'm getting a Thai yoga massage after this. So, uh, but 
for me, the thing, that, the thing that stops me most is worry about finances. Like, how am I going to support myself if I go somewhere for an extended period of time? Um, and that that sort of comes up a lot. Uh, and there, I know, I know it can be done, and I know I can do it. I um, just it just is going to take time to figure out. When uh, when I left for Spain in um, beginning of February, my daughter said to me, kind of a curious way, are you coming back? And I, I laughed. Uh, I've, I've left, you know, um, elderly parents for trips that I took and with always the, you know, because I know this has come up, Suzanne, I... My heart is with you. I, I know what that feels like, but I always had in the back of my mind, I'm a flight away. If they need me, I will come back. Um, and even when my late husband was ill, um, I had done some traveling. He was ill a long time. I had done a little bit of traveling and I always had that thought that, well, call me if you need me, I will come home. So I think about what I would have missed. I wanted to sort of, um, backtrack and sort of address that because our lives are important too and I think those those that travel sort of energized me to kind of come back and be the caregiver again um, and kind of what what Mary was saying so um, I I just appreciate this group and I hate that I have to leave early but um, you're, you're all an inspiration and I I wouldn't have been brave enough to leave for a month and go somewhere and try to live like a local. And um, I was able to do it. So thank you all. I'm going to run now. Wish I could stay. <laughs> thank, thank you, Maria. Thank you for all the pictures you've been putting on the group too. They're beautiful. <laughs> it was fun, like organizing that and doing that. I, I felt like I was documenting yeah. my life. Um, so uh, yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank thank you. you so, thank, you so, <laughs> thank you so much, Maria. I think that financial nice is, a, is a big one. Thank you for mentioning financial. It's it's a really big one that comes up for a lot of us. Yes, and especially as women, I think that it, it yeah. comes up even more. I don't, you yeah. know. All right, take care. See you soon. Bye. Thank you very much. Did anybody else have a have a anything that sort of spontaneously? came up when I asked the question, what's stopping you? I think one of the things is, um, it was COVID, you know, um, just, I worry as a nurse, I just worry about needing healthcare in a faraway place. Um, I, I think I would, there are certain places I would feel comfortable and certain, I would really have to look at it that way. You know, now that COVID is on, you know, on a decline, maybe that won't be so much of a concern, but, you know, especially if you're traveling alone, um, I'm 66. So, you know, that I'm healthy, but, you know, you're more likely the older you get to need healthcare. And um, I, I think I'd, I'd, I think about that and maybe weigh that into where I went. Oh, thank you, Eileen. Yeah, I mean, these are very real concerns, right? Finances and health. There's no question that they're um, they're real concerns and that they have to be they have to be weighed in. Um, and sometimes I think that um, um, just to go back to this chakra uh, teaching about. Um, your power center. Part of that is part of the spiritual path is uh, sort of feeling or recognizing um, that we live in an abundant world, that there is abundance rather than so, so approaching life as, as you know, that I will be taken care of, that there is abundance rather than a, a scarcity mindset. I think a lot of us, I have to fight against the scarcity mindset all the time. Do you know what I mean by that? Like, um, I don't know who is, is, can anybody relate to this idea?
Yeah, go on, Mary Ellen. Mary, Mary Ellen, can you, yeah, could you explain what you mean by the scarcity mindset? So I think, um, so I'm, I, I think I think of it sort of in terms of a spiritual path, like the, like since I've started traveling and I'm, I live in Rishikesh, which is called the yoga capital of the world, and I'm alone and I don't have a husband or family or children or lots of assets or anything like that. So part of my personal journey has been to be like way outside of my comfort zone um, and to just continually keep finding faith. I don't mean religious faith. I mean, just the faith that everything will be okay. I have to keep finding this, refinding this idea that everything will be okay. And I, and I, I feel at this point, this is just part of my path and it's not necessarily anything bad or anything that's, you know, negative or something to overcome. I think it's just kind of the way it is. So a big part of that for me, as I've gone on this path is, is to, is, I'm quite often, especially as a freelance writer, you know, quite often on the edge of, and the edge of my seat financially. And you can fall into sort of a pit of despair where you're just you're just worried there's just not going to be enough, you know, and that can really bind you up. It can make you feel very anxious and uh, contract. In yoga, there's this idea that we approach life, we either expand or we contract. So when we're anxious or uh, angry or um, feeling these kind of so-called negative emotions, like we, especially anxiety and fears and things, we contract. But the spiritual teachings and the yoga teachings that I've been exposed to are about expanding and saying, okay, so you know what? I actually don't know where my rent's going to come from, but I'm going to trust that I'll be taken care of somehow. I don't know how, but I'm going to trust that the universe is on my side and there may be some, uh, something hap that happens that I can't even anticipate. So, you know, we try to control and plan everything, but maybe there's something that I don't even, I, I don't even know what, you know, that. I don't know that's what's going to happen, but it's going to be good and I'm going to be taken care of and I'll be okay. Like I'm falling from the sky and I land in a tree and the tree you know, saves me or something. Does that make sense? Does, can anybody relate to this? Mary Ellen, do you know Sachin Arashka? And he's in Rishikesh and uh, he's, he's, he works, he's with Guruji all the time. Do you know him? He's about what's 19. His, what's his name? Uh, Sachin. Sachin, is he's it, about 17. He's with Guruji all the time. Like the Guruji um, that's in Rishikesh. Uh, there's just not a lot of people that I've met in Rishikesh. And, and, and this Sachin was a, a, a tuk-tuk driver for me. And he looked after me when I was in um, Kajuraho. He's from Kajuraho, India. Anyways, sorry. Just in the off send you go, yes, Sachin, I know Sachin. <laughs> um, when you say Guruji, who do you mean by Guruji? Oh, that's the only name that he uses with me. He's with the, the guru where everybody from Argentina goes to Rishikesh uh, to, to study under this Guruji. Oh, because there's lots of Gurujis here. So, ah, you know, okay. what, why, don't we, why don't we connect offline and see if I can figure this out? Okay. I love this. This is so cool. This is, I know we're coming to the end of our time together this morning, but I just want to acknowledge all of you and how inspirational you all are and how courageous you all are. And Mary, how wise you are. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Mary. That was beautiful. Really. Thank you. Today is a uh, believe it or not, two years since the pandemic was officially declared a pandemic. And we had, I was telling Mary Ellen, we started these calls around two years ago, give or take a week. So here we are two years later, um, crying in front of each other, <laughs> which is just an amazing thing. And we always talk about the day we're gonna meet in person. And I've been very lucky to have met Suzanne in person. And I can't wait to meet the rest of you in person. It's going to be uh, truly amazing. So I'm crying again. Ah. And if this was your first community call, um, welcome. You've been initiated. <laughs> we never know where these are going to go, but 
um, I think um, I feel like there was some movement uh, today with with a few people on this call, and that makes me really happy. So, um, and we're always here for you, and always available to talk and and um, uh, see how we can empower and inspire each other every day. That's what I want to do. So. Thank you all for joining today. Thank you, Mary Ellen, for being such a lovely host. I think you should do this all the time. You're great. It was and... so much fun and I'm so happy to meet everyone. And I feel so honored that you were like, so open about sharing. It's like really a privilege. Thank you. Thank you. And have a lovely weekend, everybody. And um, we'll see you all over. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.